Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift where we're on scenario 3B, Pet Laboratory and we are just about to start episode 11 but just before we do a couple of things if you recall, during the last episode we had Simmer play a card and uh, then I said, like, we couldn't play a card to boost it. Yeah? I think it was Lay on Hands. I said we couldn't uh, sort of play any card to boost it. Well, you can, actually. So what we're going to do is we are going to play Shield Wall. So Bastion, who was right next to Simmer, is going to play Shield Wall to boost Lay on Hands. Yeah? So we did take the wound card off Elisa and that's important we'll just discard that for the time being because after Simmer moved he couldn't play godly power yeah so what we've done in order to fix it because I read it wrong um, I would have played shield wall in order for Leon hands to work now that means that Simmer still has godly power so we'll put that back in his hand. But when he rested, he drew back up to his starting hand size. Now the last card that he picked out was Haste. Now obviously he wouldn't have picked this out if Godly Power was still in his hand. So we will put this back into the deck. Now it would go on the top because that was the order we pulled it out in. But that's a bit cheeky so what we're going to do is we'll give it a bit of a shuffle and a bit of a cut so once again we don't know what's on top of that deck so we have sorted that out was there anything else oh yes a few episodes ago Alathabal dropped explosive charge here and if you remember the bloody summoner got a five and saved but we were right next to this treasure chest. What I should have done is I should have rolled to see if the treasure chest actually broke open. Now, I cannot recall what the actual roll was. I think it was a nine, but I'm not going back to check. I can't be bothered. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna say that this blew up, yeah? We blew the treasure chest up and what was whatever was in it, we lost it. I'm not that bothered. The way I look at treasure chests in this game, you know, they're a nice to have. Yeah, I'm never going to be chasing treasure chests unless they happen, you know, to be right in front of us. And we haven't got something else better to do. Yeah, I just want to concentrate on the actual matter in hand, which in this case is killing these guys and getting out of the exit. I'm not really bothered by these. So I'm quite happy that this gets destroyed and we don't get the benefits of it. So there is my penance for not pulling the response cards because the treasure chest would have got two response cards to see if it could survive the explosion. But I'm not going back. I'm not checking it. We just blew it up. We blew it to smithereens. So we'll put that over there. Right, so I think that is it. Let's crack on with episode 11 and let's get right into the hero phase. And here we are at the hero phase. So let's spin all these guys around. Do that, leave that there so we know she has got a fatigue. Right, who is going to go first? Well, Bastion is going to go first. And he's going to use two action points, one, two, and he is now on the charge tab. He's got three of his action points left, so he's going to move up for one. Then he is going to attack this cultist. He has got four attack, the cultist has got two defense. Are we going to aid him? Yes, we are. And he's going to be aided by Elisa who is within range and she's going to use Elvish Dagger. Yes, it will mean getting rid of it, but it's Bastion who is going to be doing the heavy lifting from now on. So she is going to discard that for three. So that means seven versus two. The only way this guy can get away with it 
is to pull out a five. And it's shuffle the deck, which isn't good enough. Bloody shuffle the deck. But before we do that, he is killed. So we've got rid of that guy. Good stuff. Right, now we can shuffle the deck. Always a joy. Well, here we go. And right, that's it. It's probably got shuffle the deck right on the top. <laughs> and we've got obviously we've got to get rid of Elvish Dagger. So that goes into Elisa's discard. Okay, that is it for Bastion. Who is going to go next? And our next player is going to be Elisa. And she's just going to use one of her action points to go on to sprint. So that leaves her two left. So she can move for two, but she will also get a response card to add to that two. Which is a zero, which is bloody rubbish. Not what we wanted. <laughs> can she... Oh no, she can't even be aided now. So... In fact, given that result, is it worth moving her at all? No, nope, she's not going to move at all. Right, so forget that. So that was a horrible, even a one would have worked for us. Because we just wanted to get her here. But as you can see, this is like um, difficult terrain. You need two to get onto that one. So that is just annoying. Right, who is going to go next? And next up, we are going to have a laugh about. So she's going to spend one, two, three to go on to sprint herself. She's got one action point left. Hopefully, she'll do a bit better. A plus five, yes. <laughs> so she has got six, so she's going to go one, two, three. And she's going to go right behind Bastion there. And that is going to be it for her go. After her, who will be next? Well, it's pretty obvious who will be next. It's Simmer, because he's the only one left. <laughs> so Simmer is going to go one, two, and go on to the move tab. That means he gets another card. And he gets Divine Intervention. Smite your enemy, your attack range becomes one to three gains plus three and does not require line of sight unfortunately we can't spend it right now but uh, don't assume luck rather expect divine protection as death awaits us all so good old simmer so <laughs> there we go oh the actual designers told me these haikus they're actually not meant to be that that good because apparently simmer if you do read up on simmer there is um, there's a, a, a World of Zanziar sort of world book that you can get if you uh, back the kick, Kickstarter and it's got a load of background in it. And in it you see that Simmer is, is, let's just say that Simmer is substance challenged and we'll leave it at that. Anyway, he's got Divine Intervention so we'll put that over here. He now has six cards. Okay, movement. So... Got seven action points. He's got six left. He is going to use two to move on to here. And that is it for Simmer's go. Okay, let's get into the enemy phase. And here we are at the enemy phase. So let's pull one of these. Could do with a low number still. We've got a plus two. That's not too bad. So we've got an attack and then a move, which is bad. I didn't want a move. Um, so the attack, so obviously it's going to attack Bastion. Bastion has got a defense of three because he's down on five hit points, remember. The attack for the cultist guard is a two. So it's three versus two as it stands. Are we going to aid him? Well, I rather think we are. So we will play. I think, yes, we will play Power Surge off Simmer. So as you can see, it does have a defense symbol and it's three for aiding. So that puts him up to six. So that's six versus two. 
and I think we'll go for that. Six versus two. We'll just draw, and then we will get the extra card for Simmer. But let's draw. So, needs a plus five. Yep. Yeah. So, it's got an attack of two. Needs to be six. It needs plus five. Got a plus one. That isn't good enough. So, he missed. Power Surge goes to the back of Simmer's deck. But, off the front of his deck, because we get an extra card, laying on hands. Brilliant. That's what we wanted. Fantastic. So, excellent. That's worked out for us as well. Carrying on with the enemy phase, we go to move. Well, it is going to move because it wants to keep Bastion in three range. It's currently at two range, so it will move back one. So it's now at three range. This chap moves. He is right next to the exit now. So next time he goes, he will get out the exit and we will put up the threat meter. Okay, so that is it for the enemy phase. Next up, it's next turn and the hero phase. And here we are at the hero phase. So let's spin everybody around. Who is going to go first? Well, first is going to be Elisa. So she has got three action points. She's going to go one, two, three, and she is going to rest. Now that's not going to get rid of any fatigue, but she is going to rest. And that means she can draw up to her hand size. Also, well, all these that she spent, we'll put those back. Are they all the right way around? Are they Buxton all the way around? Right way around. Right, there we go. So we've got to give these a quick shuffle. And a cut. And she's only got grand theatre at the moment, so that means she will draw four cards. So she gets focus. Elvish dagger comes back. Brilliant. And helping hand. And the last card she gets is fireball. Unfortunately, <laughs> poor old Bastion's in the way of everything now, but at least we can aid him. Right, brilliant. I'll put these on her player area. Won't be a second. Okay, what next? Yep, that's it for her, so we'll just turn that inwards. She won't be able to aid or be aided this turn because she's on the rest tab, remember? But at least all those cards are in hand for later. Okay, so that is it for Elisa. Who is going to go next? Well, our next hero is going to be Alathabal. So alathabal has got four action points. So she's going to go one, two, skip, three, onto bash. She's not actually going to bash anybody, but she does have to take a response card regardless. So she gets a plus two, but she's not actually going to hit anybody. She is just using up that spoke. So we'll spin her around, and that is it for a Lathabal. Next up, who is it going to be? Well, our next player is going to be Simmer. And Simmer is going to go onto the special tab. The main reason is we want to use the spoke up. She's not, he's not going to use banish because it's four spaces away anyway, probably five. Yeah, it's five spaces away, so he's not going to use banish. Now, does have some cards, however, but godly power and laying on hands, nobody's actually got a wound card in their hand. So we're not going to use those. And I don't think, no, that is it. So, again, we were just making sure that this particular spoke was full. Why? Because we need it full for Bastion, and Bastion is next. And here we are with Bastion. So Bastion gets to skip. Skip, because he uses bash, remember? One skip 
two, three, four, five. So you see how filling these spokes in has meant you can get back to the charge tab. So he's first got to move, then he's got to attack. So what we're going to do is he's got absolutely no action points left. So Alathabal is going to aid him by playing Rush, which gives us two. So that will give us two movement. One, two. Coolness. We'll get rid of that. Now we're on the combat part of that tab. So what are we going to do? He needs to attack. He's got four attack against two defense. Are we going to aid him? Yes, we are going to aid him. Oh, are we? I've just got to check the reaction on experimental device. Won't be a sec. Okay, I'm back. It just says you can't play reactions during your own turn, and we're not. We're playing them on Bastion's turn. So we're going to use it for aiding, 13. That means Alathabal is going to get a fatigue, but who cares? So we'll put a fatigue onto her on there. She's took a fatigue. Now we'll remove this card once we've played it, which is now, but that is 13. Now we lose two of that 13 because we're two range away, which leaves us with 11. So we're playing that for 11 A. 11 plus four is 15. 15 against two. So we're gonna pull a response card and if it's got 13 on it, then this cultist guard is gonna escape injury. Oh, unlucky. Now, if that had had a one in front of it, he might have escaped injury. But as it is, he's been hit. We'll remove this card. So that'll go with teleportation and one true command. And we'll put a wound on this guy. Excellent stuff. So that is it for Bastion's go. And that is it for the hero phase. Let's move on to the enemy phase. And here we are at the enemy phase. So let's pull one of these over. And we've got a minus one. <laughs> so that sends it back to attack. So we'd, even if it had gone forwards, we'd have got an attack. So that doesn't really bother. What is annoying is we'll probably get a move next turn and it might be able to escape. So we're definitely going to have to try and kill it next turn. But it gets an attack. We'll get rid of that just in case we get our friend shuffle the deck. So it's going to attack. Now it's got two attack. We have got three defense. Are we going to aid Bastion? Well, have we got anything that we can aid him with? Not really because of how far away we are. With us being at such a distance away from him, we won't really give him that much. Um, we've got gasoline. Alathabal's about the nearest, but that is for two aid. So, you know, what's going to happen there? In fact, it's going to turn to zero aid because he's at two range away from Alathabal. So we're just going to have to take it, man. So... It's three against two. Here's the response card for the attack. It's a plus four. That is a hit. Bastion has gone down to four hit points. And he takes a wound card. And he also takes a fatigue. So he's now down to three action points. He's down to four action points because he's on four hit points. But he's down a three action points because of this fatigue. He can't go less than three action points, thankfully. But he's stuck with that till the end of the game, I'm afraid. So let's put these down here. Okay, so that is the attacks done. This guy can't attack. 
we haven't got anything else to do so that is the end of the enemy phase that is also the end of this episode it's uh, we're getting there obviously it's a bit of a mop-up operation I I'm tempted to carry on but I'm not gonna carry on I got burned once doing that anybody who see my Azathoth Eldritch Horror <laughs> playthrough will know that I no longer try and play games out it's counterproductive the game just gets awkward and you end up standing here for about four hours trying to finish it off so i am going to stop here so thank you so much for watching i think we've done pretty well this turn we've managed to kill another one of the guards this one's putting up a spirited resistance and in fact we are going to have to find a way to aid bastion fairly quickly the reason being is we do need to kill this guard on the next hero phase as soon as we've done that i think i'm not gonna bother i'm not gonna bother with this down here um i'm just gonna let it ride what we'll do is we'll just head towards the exit we do have uh, laying on hands and godly power so i probably will try and get simmer to heal bastion and uh, get a Lathabal to heal both Elisa and Bastion with her special ability. But I'm not going to bother with that treasure chest down there. We're just going to head for the exit. Okay, so having explained my plans, uh, thank you again for watching. Thanks so much for all the views. Thanks so much for all the subscriptions, for all the likes, and for all the help and support. It really is appreciated. I know I say it every episode, but it is. Thank you to everybody who's been up to board game links to upvote the site. We're back into 10th. Somehow we got, a, we got a surge. So thanks very much for that. And thank you to everybody on BGG who has upvoted the videos, commented on the threads, etc. Thank you so much. I hope you will join me next time for episode 12 of Perdition's Mouth, Abyssal Rift. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel signing off. Toodaloo.